My name is Keith Lee, I'm the lead producer on Diablo 3. At the end of the day though, we, we thought about it, and we actually think that having an isometric camera allows us to create a lot of positional strategy and to have a lot of new gameplay um, that's different from that. And also the fact that in terms of generating content, it's uh, a lot easier in that way, and that way we can focus on the core gameplay, work on skills that uh, really leverage the isometric view. And we feel that visually, as well as in terms of design, it makes a more compelling game. You want to think about how your character is in relationship to different monsters. And for example, you might want to kill a few monsters that are close to you, but then there's maybe a few cultists in the back that are transforming. So you have to consider where you want to be, depending on all your skills. And I think that that's really a really great part of our game. Uh, another really big thing about our game is the fact that we have a very easy interface so that you can uh, figure out where you want to go like on the screen very quickly and each hero also has a lot of different skills that allow you to shoot ranged weapons, um, you can also have ranged projectiles to very close range attacks, but we want, to, we want you to think strategically in terms of like who you want to kill and I think this camera view actually like really facilitates that. We don't want every monster to have the same speed, and we want to have a lot of variety. We want fast approaching monsters, we want monsters that come out of the ground if you've seen climbing out of walls, dropping down from walls. Uh, huge monsters that, have a little bit, that are a little bit slower, but um, allows you to get in a better position strategically. And as you've seen also, we have environmental destructibles, and that's part of positional gameplay as well. We really wanted to keep with the spirit of Diablo 1 and Diablo 2, one of their core features was the fact that you had randomized dungeons and that really got people excited because you could just keep playing a lot of the dungeons again. There was never this sense of being, uh, it's very different from going to a World of Warcraft raid or a dungeon where everything is deterministic. In this case, everything is completely random including the loot and our idea is the fact that we're expanding upon that and not only do you have randomized dungeons now and random loot, but you also have random quests random encounters in the environments, different monster distributions, and things like that. So for Diablo 3, we're going to have five distinct classes. One is the Barbarian that we announced yesterday, and as well as the Witch Doctor. They're very different because the Barbarian, we wanted to create a hero that is so powerful, he's so visceral, and that he's very physical. But one of the coolest things that we felt that the Barbarian was a character that we wanted to carry over from the past Diablo series, but um, we wanted to add a lot of new skills and still keep a lot of the favorites that people have, such as Whirlwind or The Leap and things like that. Uh, for the Witch Doctor, we felt that he was a very good mixture of someone that's more of a necromancer, someone that um, can, can use ranged attacks, but then also um, influenced with crowd control and things like that. So one of the things about Blizzard, of course, this is Blizzard, is the fact that we're so focused on the quality of the game that as long as our fans are really happy with it and that we are and we play it a lot, that's when we feel it's ready. That being said, our, um, our production of our game isn't linear. There's no way to really say it's 20% of 40 because when you get to the point where you're 80% done, that might actually just be 20% of the work still. Um, so what we really want to do is complete the game and then we'll iterate on it and we'll just continue to polish it until we feel that we're really happy and that we're ready.